All right. I'm getting a message saying we're on the air. Do you think uh, we're on the air? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, everyone. We are going to talk about Notion's new database features today. I'm Marie Poulin. I'm here with Kat Mulvihill. Some of you might have seen our last uh, our last live stream, I think, was when Notion launched their grouping feature. But I think, yeah. I think this feature is actually a way bigger feature. And so there's a lot of funny oh, yeah. quirks to to unpack. So we thought it might be good to, I don't know, open up the playground today. And yeah. Yeah, David. Yeah. And please, please say hi. I see, I see David just said hi. Uh, I see another viewer whose name I cannot read. Hello, and hello. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. If you do have any Beth. requests in terms of our building, you feel free to drop it in the chat. We've got a couple test pages that we're going to mess around with. But if you want to see something fun, definitely don't hesitate to ask. All right. And I so guess I, one, yeah. one thing I wanted to ask. I, I'm going to say, I want to ask you, but also ask everyone who's here watching and willing to put something in the chat. What, what do you think, what's the one aspect that is most exciting about this update? I mean, I know for me, it's the ability to combine multiple databases into mm -hmm. a single view. It cleans up pages so much. Um, yeah. I feel like I, I almost don't even notice any of the other features. To me, that is, <laughs> that's like the only thing that I'm so, so, so excited about. What about you? See, I like I like the combining, but I have to say hiding titles. It's just it's little, but it really cleans up a page. It allows for a level of customization that I think most Notion users have been craving. Like that just that little nagging, oh, I wish I could hide this. You know, that's yeah. it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah, combining databases, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so should we should we dig in with some screen sharing? Should we play? Yeah. What's the best? Uh, best for Let's us? do it. All right. I'm also checking out some. Breeze House is the place to be. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on the chat. I was saying. I also. I think. Um, if I love Marie's background so much and feel very self conscious about my studio setup when I see like the nice like plants and cave lighting. with lights, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. I see folks awesome. mentioning the ease of switching views as well. Feels like OneNote on steroids. Yeah, yeah, the tabs do have a little bit of a OneNote feel to them. Ariba saying the filters. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I mean, one interesting thing that has changed quite a bit is how you create new databases from scratch, which I think is kind of interesting. I think it actually yes. is not as intuitive and not as natural to start from scratch. So I thought we could uh, show yeah yeah well yeah and i think just to give people an idea obviously we would love to hear from you what you would like to explore and see some of the things that we are going to be showing are what's the difference between an original source versus a linked view and how what are some of the differences when you're creating those linked views what should you know we're also going to share some quirks that we have kind of stumbled upon in our experience so far. It hasn't been a long time, but we will share like what are some of the things and also what are some recommendations that we have based on our experience playing around with the new databases. Um, and also some of the different opinions people might have because uh, I, you know, one one area where I'm starting to develop a slightly different opinion than some of my other colleagues is filters. So we're going to talk about the filters as well because they, they are different. Yeah, I think even Ben has quite strong opinions too. I know he was saying that he thinks to always default to going to advanced filters, but I think temporary filters have their place. Yeah. Okay, PJ was saying- We'll, we'll talk about yeah, when and why. Yeah. yeah. There was a comment about not understanding synced databases too well. Um, and that might be interesting to talk about too, because we're not talking about synced blocks anymore. We're talking about linked databases. And so maybe that difference between the original and linked, just getting into that a little bit more. So it's super clear because yeah. it's the most powerful part of Notion, I think. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Do you want to, so let's make one. <laughs> let's make some databases. Okay. So there's, what, there's three, technically three, maybe even four ways to make a database from scratch now. So the shortcuts are... A little bit different or even the number of clicks are a little bit different depending on which method you choose right mm -hmm. so we can type slash data now 
which allows us to change. Yeah, and you things. actually you used to be able to just write slash D, I think it would start to bring up databases. But now if you actually say DAT, you'll get date first. And but so if you write data, that will give you an inline. And you can see right now that it gave a, a table inline. So this is an original database. It's a brand new database that's on this page. It's not a separate database page. And when you select that data inline, I don't do, if we show, so I'm just going to pop below. If we go right below and do a slash, can you see this or is it only Marie's I can see uh, it. data? Oh yeah, you can't see mine. <laughs> um, so I can build on the page, but you won't see my, my slash. But slash data, the very first option is a database inline. And that will give you a table. It doesn't let you choose. Before you used to be able to say gallery inline, board inline, you know, timeline inline, those are gone. So the menu has changed. Right, so I'll do that again and delete this. Yeah, so before, so now I, I can type gallery, for example, if I want a gallery view, but that's gonna prompt you to now choose a database source or start from scratch. So it's, it's a little bit clunkier. It's a, a little extra step to now create a new gallery view from scratch. Yeah. So here we go new gallery i'm not even going to correct my typing <laughs> i don't know it's going to drive cat crazy <laughs> but you can hide it we can hide it although let's hide that typo yeah there we go. but here's here's our first tip if you if you do have an inline database on a page an original source like this is where the this is where the data lives we do not recommend that you hide the title because you, it looks just like a linked database and you could delete accidentally that original source. So I think oh. both of us agree if you have an original database that keep the name showing so you'll be able to see that it is in fact an original database because there will not be that little arrow that you see when you have a linked database on a page. And so should we address maybe one of our top recommendations, which would be to whenever you create a linked or sorry, an original database would be to turn that into a page. And then we're just going to tuck that away near the bottom. I like to tuck it away into a toggle so you don't even see it and you don't even touch it. There we go. Yeah. And if you're working with others, putting in brackets, do not touch, although that makes them want to touch it. But <laughs> it's still helpful to be crystal clear that this is this is the original. Don't and go just, deleting this. And I'm going to share again why we do this. So you can copy the link to this, any any page uh, database. I'm going to paste this and say create linked view of database. So you can see here, it's the same database, but now we're using a linked view. You can tell by the arrow there. And so it's just always safer <laughs> to work from these linked instances. You won't accidentally delete it. And you can also now mix data. So let's say I want to, you know, include this new database above. I can choose new database. Great. So now we've got two databases mixed into one. So don't even touch those originals. That's kind of one of our, our first recommendations there. Mm -hmm. Curious if, there, if I mean, there, that there. Yeah, and I would say there are going to be occasions where an inline database makes sense. So it's not that we never do them. I would say, though, if it's one of your core databases, something you're using throughout, just tuck that away, hide the original. And I mean, it's still going to be accessible because it's in your workspace, but working from these linked databases is the way to go. Oh, that's a great, good question. We talked about hiding. Do we want to show how to hide and then unhide a title because it's not in the same place? <laughs> Yeah, so let's hide this title here. Okay, to bring it back, we have to click back on these database properties, click on the layout type. I don't think this is super intuitive. I almost feel like it should be on this menu here. You bring yeah. the title back. So it's a little bit, there we go, a little clunky. So yeah. there's just some things I'd like to take an extra list. two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can unhide title and properties. Yep. Okay, cool. So that's, that's definitely a nice thing that it does tidy things up and you just got to be really good about naming stuff here too. All right. Fancy new database. And I think that's something that we've heard. I even saw in the chat that, you know, someone was saying, I actually find it's inconvenient and frustrating. The initial work to clean up a little bit, for example, every database title, you have to choose to hide it. 
And if you have a lot of linked views, then there's that. And if you hide it, you want to make sure that the name of the view tells you what you want or, or you can have a header. I mean, that's another way that you can, but you want to be able to see what is the data I'm looking at. And I think, you know, Marie, when we were prepping for this, we discussed that, that if you are working with a team, be very careful about hiding titles. If you suddenly hide titles from everyone and it's not obvious what data set they are working with, for example, if you have a linked view and you've hidden a lot of properties, somebody on your team might not actually know what they are looking at. So you want to make sure that you are really labeling everything clearly that a, you know, a guest who's never been in the space could come in and navigate intuitively. So just really thinking about the user experience when you're hiding titles and when you are naming the tabs for your views. And that brings up a, a good point too. I think when you're working with databases, usually full width pages can make a lot of sense here. Otherwise you'll notice those views get tucked back into that old style with yeah. that drop down. So I can't see that secondary view there, but I think if I rename this slightly shorter, I will see it here, right? So you kind of have limited real estate with those tabs. So I think going full page usually makes sense. Something to be aware of. Lizzie was saying the most frustrating thing at this moment, finding the missing duplicate column in a table. I use often creating formulas, any quick workarounds. I'm not sure I understand the duplicate column. Because you can, um, Lizzie, you can duplicate views. Is that what you're referring to? I can duplicate this one as many times as I want, but let me know if you're referring to something different. I wanna make sure that mm -hmm. we answer that. Because the actual view, like the way that you're seeing the data, that hasn't changed. The way you edit titles has changed. The way you show and hide properties has changed where you access the filters. So there, the menu has changed, but the actual table itself has not changed. So your your data should all look the same. It's really just kind of the top that really looks different. And then how you make edits and changes to your page. The other thing we were kind of discovering the other day and, and talking through is Notion now adds... <sighs> yeah in the sidebar now. It, it definitely clutters up your sidebar when you're using multiple databases here. So you can actually separately rename the views and give different icons to this. I think this is another one of those things I really wish they would turn off by default or give you the option to do because it just makes for a really messy sidebar that's not really necessary. So I can, uh, I can rename this view. Let's have fun and give it a different icon if I want to. And the, so the weird thing about this is I'm not actually changing the database name. I'm just changing the name of the view in the sidebar, right? So nothing's changed here, but it just looks a little different here. Maybe I'm craving some travel time. One day we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it looks like the duplicate is in the old database. You could click on a column and duplicate the property. I think, whereas when you now, if you right click on a property you your options that you can't create a new one from doing that it looks like now you can duplicate on the side so i just created a new property in our top one the fun so it says property mm -hmm. if you click on that in the sidebar there's a duplicate property there so if you so marie if you click on property and say rename or edit let's say edit or both of those will open it. See how it says duplicate property here? Mm -hmm. So I guess it's not one click away, but there is the option to duplicate. And so if we click duplicate, we now have property one beside it. Oh yeah, I didn't realize it's actually not showing here. The other thing too would be to open it up and you can always do it from here too, right? Duplicate property. But yeah, there's all these like just tiny, tiny little quirks that just look a little mm -hmm. bit different. Yeah, if you don't want to, ew, if you don't want to open the page to do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a two-step process now, unfortunately, okay. Yeah, and so I think if you've developed a workflow and then suddenly that workflow is gone, that is definitely frustrating. <laughs> no shame. That's really funny that you yeah. <laughs> open a page. Ew. <laughs> yes, that's, that's such an interesting point about feeling bad for new users because some stuff is more is easier 
but I think a lot of stuff is less intuitive now. So it's like I, I would I would be really oh. interesting to like I because all of us here I'm guessing unless there's some new users and maybe let us know if you are brand new if you haven't used it you're just curious and you're watching but I would actually be curious if someone started a new database if they would find it as frustrating as people who are used to one workflow and they go to another with any software the first time you use it that's your first experience with it you you might find seeing that sidebar open up is makes sense to you. Maybe it's not confusing at all. So I would be really curious to talk to you. Now, they won't necessarily find things like hiding the title. That that to me is more of a tucked away little feature, although a lot of software has features that many users don't know about. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Want to hide table view tabs. Yep. I mean, those... It's pretty easy to hide any of your any of your oh, but properties. Oh, the tab, so. maybe maybe oh. the view at the top. Want to hide those tab? Ah, uh, so like the fact that you can't actually tuck them anymore into a drop down. Yeah, interesting. What is hide in view? It just basically means hide. No. Like, oh, I thought you just clicked on the little table and then. It said hide in view. What does that do? Well, oh, you're looking hides. at a property. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I thought you were clicking on the view on the top of your. Also, I'm going to refresh because I'm I'm in the workspace and I'm not seeing your fancy view. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's weird. Although you got the fancy view down here. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. There we go. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, you can't hide it. That's too bad. So if someone doesn't like having them across the top, then that's a disadvantage. <laughs> hey, Beth is a total newbie. So I'd be curious if, you know, if Beth were just starting from scratch and like would would editing all on the right side be intuitive or not? Yeah. I do I do find there's just a little bit of jumping from left to right, like if we're starting to add filters. Okay, let's, you know, filter by, oh, I guess we don't, we don't actually have any properties in here. Should we? we, we you do a linked table to one where we yeah. have some sample data. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's Hey, Patrick difference. from Everyday Tech is here. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. yeah, so we've got some, we've got some tasks here. And let's maybe filter by status. Oh, I guess we don't have any status. Let's. <laughs> Active. Hold. We have a project status. Oh yeah, I think I was thinking of projects. I don't think we really need a status for tasks if uh, if they're done or not. But anyway, just just to show kind of what the what the filters look like. Okay, great. All I only want to see active stuff, and I can leave this here or save it so that Cat will see that on on her side too. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What else? So do yeah, I think with the filters, so let's maybe talk about filters. So right now we have a filter where you can clearly see the filters for the status. And right now the filter is set to active and we can actually pick more than one. So maybe we want everything that's active or on hold, just not complete. We can actually just multiple, we can select those and take them away, which is kind of nice. You can't read the whole thing across the top, but if you're only ever filtering on that one thing, that's a really clean way to see exactly what your filter is. If you have, so this is my thinking <laughs> with these filters. This is kind of the basic filter or default filter right now. You filter, you grab the property you want to filter by, and then you set your properties. I personally feel like if you have a filter like this, where you quickly want to be able to toggle, or maybe you always want that filter set, there's nothing wrong with these filters as they are, these basic filters. If you also have what I call an and property, so maybe you always wanna see active and you wanna see things that aren't complete or aren't checked off. That's a very typical thing you would have for a task list. Having those two basic properties is totally fine to me. It's where you would, yeah, so if we see that where done is unchecked. So you can see exactly what your filters are. You can also hide them though. If you hit the filter button on the top right, you can actually make that disappear. So you don't always have to see your filters. So you can toggle them on and off. But I do think for a person who's not sure what filter is applied, or maybe if you're sharing with a team, it's a nice way for someone to see that. 
If we go to an advanced filter, which is another option, it becomes what's called a rule. And the rule you cannot see. You have to actually open the rule in order to see it. So I would say that there are some advantages to actually seeing what the filter is, and you can always hide it and show it again, versus every time you want to see a, a rule, you have to open it. And so personally, I would say if you have an and situation, I want to see status is active and it's not checked off. I would, I would, I think I'm going to lean towards having these kind of standard filters where they're at the top. If you have a more complicated situation where you need an or, so, you know, it task is assigned to me or the completed by is not me. That's an example where it's two different properties and I want either option to show up. That's where you need to have an advanced filter. And that's where I would definitely go to the advanced filter, but having to open it up to see it, I think is actually, I don't know. I don't love that. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's my opinion <laughs> on the filters. Yeah. And you can always I don't know. merge these to advanced if, if and as needed. Yeah. And what's nice in both the simple one and the advanced is that you don't have to say a group. Like if you wanted where status is active or status is on hold or status is on deck, you don't have to create a separate filter every time. Whereas before you had to have this or this or this, it was became a really long filter that's and true. you don't have to do that anymore. And that's really nice. And that works both on both aspects. I don't know Same if you have any <laughs> opinions on uh, on that, Marie, that you want to share about filters. Yeah, I just, I, I've i vocalized this before in my video too, that I just don't think the way that they've handled dynamic dates as only an advanced filter, yeah. I don't think it's super intuitive. I do hope they make some changes to that. Yeah, yeah that's good. Do you want to show an example of that? Yeah, so I think, uh, so oh, for example, yeah. with, ta with tasks, I generally always want my task list to be dynamic. I, I want to see what is due this week. So I want any, I want it to cover any dates that are on or before one week from now or that sort of thing. But to do that, I can't, I can no longer filter in kind of one go the way you used to be able to. So I'd like to say date is on or before next week, but it kind of, it's forcing me to choose yeah. a specific date, which I think is kind of the, usually the least helpful option. I'm rarely ever filtering for a specific date manually. And so you kind of have to know to click over here, go to advanced filter, know that date is dynamic here. So I think that's definitely one of the misses in this new yeah. feature. Yeah, that one feels backwards. It's yes. more likely that you would use a relative date, like show me everything in the last month, the last week or the next week versus picking a specific date because you would have to probably update that date filter so frequently. Exactly. So it doesn't, yeah, that one, that one does, I agree feels like a bit of a, a miss. We can cross our fingers that <laughs> Notion will make some UI improvements to that. Um, I see some interesting comments. Regine was saying, I love many of the new features, but some of them impact my cognitive load. I have to pause and rethink. And especially for anyone that's used Notion for a really long time, I, there's a number of times, especially with the title and the properties, things that used to be in the properties that now you have to go to the layout style. And so I often find I'm clicking several times. I have to kind of train my brain not to look where you used to look. So I, I definitely agree with that little added cognitive load. And I'm, I'm really, really curious again, how beginners will, will they take that stuff up easier because they don't have that previous notion functionality burned into their brain. Yeah. And do we yeah. want to show an example, just since we've got the filters open of actually having sort of a standing filter that doesn't have anything applied. What do we call that? <laughs> There's a name for it. Sorry, what do you mean? Like, so if we take the Here's done the and then just clear it, mm -hmm. you can still have the done. So it's grayed out. And so this is an option that didn't have before where you can have a filter kind of ready to go or ready to be applied, but the done right now doesn't actually have anything. So it's just sitting there ready for you which can be nice for a team if you if you know people are commonly going to search say by status or by done then they can just go in and apply the filter and it doesn't have to that's where this reset or save for everyone comes into play which i feel like there's still some confusion 
about when it does and does not show up. <laughs> yeah. But there we go. And then let's hide yeah. that title. Great. So that takes up a lot less space. And then we can bring that back, hide it away nice mm -hmm. and clean. All right. So we've done the hiding and showing names. Tabs get hidden when there's too much content. Clearly naming tabs. What are some of the other quirks and gotchas to be aware of? Oh, and Ben is saying, I call them quick filters. Yeah, I like that quick idea. Quick filters. Quick yeah. filters. It's ready for you. You don't have to set it up, but you can then go and customize it. Yeah. So yeah, what are... Um, okay, we already talked about that sidebar views thing. Funniness, yeah. So awkward. <laughs> and... So hideous. Um, I see a note. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I find a quirk is that save for everyone. We're not 100% clear. Sometimes it shows up. So I have in my personal notion space, I have certain pages that are shared, but not all of them. And on a page that is not shared, I had the option to save for everyone. And I thought, I don't know why this is showing up because I don't share this page. So I'm not, <laughs> not yeah, really I think sure. I had that experience too. Yeah. Ben's working on a flowchart, he said, to, yeah. that describes when it shows up and it's complex. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was if the database was shared on a private page, but that, that wouldn't really make sense. I don't know. Yeah. Don't Although know. sometimes Notion does things that don't make sense. Yeah. Do you want to show, I think we had talked about the example of, so we have a brand new source table. Do we want to create a couple of views and then show people why it's helpful to maybe have some views set up in the original database. Yeah, like going to the fun database. Yeah, yeah so let's go to the fun database. <laughs> what what do we well, let's put some let's put some data in the fun database. Uh here, let's change the properties. And I'm gonna change this property to oh also the editing properties is quite different. Yeah, that is a little goofy. Also, mine closes on me very quickly. Okay, so I just created, I just edited a property of degree of fun. Oh, so yours is very similar. <laughs> so I was going to say, hi, fun. This is hi, fun. But this one, this is gonna be low fun. <laughs> this is what happens when two Enneagram sevens are both editing a table at the same time. And let's okay. So we have on a date property. Yeah. So this is this fun database, which may, like really means nothing and is complete <laughs> nonsense is an original database and right now we have a table view and we have a second table view so we have two tables maybe let's change the second one to a different layout yeah let's do that yeah let's change it to a board view board view by status <laughs> way too much fun okay great Okay, so we've got a board view, we've got a table view. Let's also add a calendar view. Great. And let's have some more fun tomorrow instead. Okay, great. And I'm going to rename the table. Oh no, let's just say table board calendar. We can just keep those names. Okay. okay. So the reason we're showing you this is because with these new linked views of databases, they can pull from multiple sources. So if we add a new view to this linked table below, we can add the source and the source will be our fun, <laughs> our fun database. And we can, we get to pick, what, did it not give you Oh, it option? didn't give us the option. <laughs> Is it because we made this linked database Why? after? Okay, let's try. Let's uh... try a new one. Let's try a brand new one. 
yeah, now it gives us the options. Okay, that's okay. an interesting quirk. All right. Okay, we just discovered a new one. So we picked the source of fun and you can see these three that we created. So let's, let's create, I mean, we can copy one. But one of the things now is that if we create a new view on this linked database, so we've got this new linked database, we create a brand new view with the same data. So it's from the fun database, but maybe it's a totally different view. I don't know if we want to do like a timeline or something like that. New empty or view. we could have it, we could have it filtered. And what will happen after we create this new view is that it will now be an option to copy when we add another view, which we can show you in a moment. So now we have a timeline. So now when we create it, we can copy all the originals and any of the ones that we've now created in this linked database. So it sort of builds off of each other. If, if that makes sense, I hope that makes sense to people. <laughs> yeah, so we create, you know, recommend creating a couple views on the original, but then tucking it out of the way, then you can import those views anytime you create a linked database and then keep adding to it. So you got some options. Yeah, and a, and a really good example of a use case. So let's say you wanted to group tasks by category. Maybe you want all your finance tasks in one view. You want all your admin tasks in another view. You want all of your marketing tasks in another view. You could easily copy your create one for finance. And then your next view, you duplicate it, but change the, the filter, change the category. So the next one is going to be your marketing. The next one will be your admin. You can easily repeat and copy the views you just made. Your properties, I believe, will stay the same. Uh, the filter will already be there. You could just update the filter. So I actually have found in my testing that it's really easy to create a few similar views with different filters, which is nice. Because before you were starting from, well, you could duplicate a view, I guess, before, and that would that would help. But this one automatically lets you pick which one when you want to copy, which is nice. Yeah, I like it. I like that. I think that definitely saves a lot of time. I think what's funny about that too is people I think used to not create any views on their original because Notion doesn't pull them in. And so now yeah. people are kind of having to go back to their old databases to add a couple views. Yeah. And I see um, the comment here in the chat, if they were named views, they'd be the same name, like three timelines would be hard to choose from. So you would rename them. So if we created, so right now you see how there's a marketing and finances. If we actually create a new view from the fun database and it asks us our source, we will see the name marketing, we'll see the name finances. So anything you've named your view, that the name of the view will show up. And so that's where getting into the habit of naming your view based on what it is displaying or how you've filtered it or sorted it, depending on what it is. And if you're pulling from a new source, meaning a different database, I would also encourage you to consider that in naming. So I know so, I have, yeah, like we both have a few views now where we have different databases pulled in and yep. incorporating the name of the database in the tab title is helpful. Big time. Yep. So instead of just saying calendar, you'd say tasks or, you know, low yeah. effort tasks or whatever that is. Um, Teddy had a question. Mm -hmm. Do changes to the original view update all the linked ones as well? No. So that is one instance where only if your database was inside of a synced block and you were using that synced block elsewhere. So once you've once you've already created a linked database, changing the original won't change your views that have already been created. Which is, it's kind of similar to a database template. If you create a database template, you then use it to create some pages within your database. If you then edit your template, it won't go back and change the ones that you used before. So it will only update what you go going forward. So I think you would change the original. If you then create a new linked view and pull it, it'll give you, you can copy that view and it'll copy the, the updated view, but it won't go back retroactively. Similar exactly. to a template won't go back retroactively. Yeah. Let me know if that, if that clarifies Teddy. I know I feel like the databases and linked databases was the hardest thing to wrap my brain around in the beginning. And once I was like, oh, wait, this is so powerful. But it it takes a while because it doesn't work like a lot of other apps and tools do. So, yeah, it's a bit, yeah. a bit funny. 
a bit surprised that hovering over a view tab doesn't display the name of the source database. Oh, that's interesting too, right? Like just hovering over, giving you a little tool tip or something oh, that would say, that's pretty that smart. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that suggestion. Yeah. I think someone should write that down. <laughs> yeah. Ben's probably got it well, in his... I'll him. Yeah. <laughs> that, so yeah, yeah, that would be good. I think for the example of... So an example yesterday, we, uh, we're on a project page in the team workspace. And on the project page, usually there's a link database with the tasks that are assigned to that project. But then in addition, there are usually notes and ideas about the project. So there's now a linked database where the name of it is tasks or actions. And then the other name for the next database is notes and ideas. So you can hide both titles, but you're going to know intuitively is one an action and is one a note and idea. So I think really you don't want to always duplicate the exact name, but the, that does help for knowing what it is. Yeah, so this example here, Marie, is pulling up notes and ideas in the linked database, naming the view notes, and then also having a view called actions. And remember, the little icon shows you the type of layout. So you can tell by looking, is this a list? Is it a table? Is it a timeline? Is it a gallery? Is it a board? You can tell with that little icon, which is similar to before. That's Notion's always had that. So we don't have to name, and I would say most of the time we don't need to name our our tab by the layout. Right, yeah. The layout is often the least, I think, helpful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Jackie was saying, I love the views being copies, copied, 10 out of 10 worth the new learning. And I think it's just a learning curve. If for those who've been using Notion for a while, they're, there's a little bit of work up front to clean things up. But, well, and you don't actually have to do any cleaning up technically, <laughs> but now that you can hide titles and rename some of the views, it's, I think, I'm just doing it as I come across it. So yeah, Ben was saying, I think this view system is the groundwork for scoped views. And I think we may see that, which would be a big game changer. Yeah. Fingers, fingers crossed on that, yeah. And when with scoped views, for anyone who's wondering what what does that mean, uh, it would be the opportunity for hiding, let's say, a property from a user in a database so they can see parts of the data, but not every single property, which is a really big or being able to filter access by a property. So if you had clients only client A can see client client A data potentially. So that's on the wish list for most most Notion users and praying. Yeah, or again being able to share parts of tasks with a client, but not have that client have access to all of your tasks. Because currently yeah. you can't really scope access except if you're gonna open up an individual entry and I can say, you know, remove access to this one particular. But that that's pretty cumbersome to scope out access to every mm -hmm. single individual entry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a girl can dream. Yeah. Yes. Oh <laughs> and, my God, that'd be super nice. <laughs> yes. But you know, in the interim, this new mixing, uh, mixing different databases now could allow you to do something like client one, you know, and have, have one client's tasks, the other client tasks as well. So those would be shared databases, but they're not able to view your own databases. So at least you can pull that data into one page where maybe you couldn't couldn't do that yeah. before. Well, and one of the things that uh, I think we might do a video on this, if you are willing to use the API and in particular using automate.io, you can actually create, you can have separate databases. So you have a master client database, then you have client one database, client two database, client three, and where you actually have it automated in the background. So when you put something in the master for client one, it will show up in client one database. Um, and then also the client could comment and you can update back. So we can do a video on how you would do that using an API, because for many people that is desirable. They want to be able to share their database with a client without sharing any other client data. So I think the idea is that we'll do a demonstration of how do you actually set that up? What do the bots look like 
in Automate so that you can do that. Yeah, I'm really, and... I'm really curious kind of what features they're going to develop around that because I know they're probably a little more focused on the enterprise features, but for people that do manage clients inside of Notion, I'm, I am curious if Notion will start to... I think at the enterprise level, it would be really helpful as well because yeah. there are probably people with different roles at the organization who would want to be able to add some Work notes with without parties. everyone. Yeah. Or even internally, let's say a C-suite yeah. wants to be able to comment on a project privately. Right now, you can't have a property with, you know, private comments, et cetera. You could, you could work around it and have a synced block from a private page that you paste into a public page and no one could see it because of the synced block's original location. But that's, I mean, that's sort of advanced use case of that. I found some cupcake Ipsum, so now I'm going to yeah. change my lorem Ipsum generator to cupcake Ipsum. <laughs> And I saw um, Everyday Tech as their conditional formatting. We don't have, I don't think there's any conditional formatting with uh, with Notion databases yet. Yeah. That, that would be nice if you could maybe turn the row a different color or something like that if, if its status were to change kind of like a spreadsheet. Yeah, I think, I think Ben's comment was... Uh delayed but yeah that idea that you can't uh you only have the options of choosing those views on new linked databases so i think i think we already addressed that comment yeah probably. and if you have so let's say if we took the example and maybe we even have the example of our fund database but the where we have board timeline marketing finance calendar if we duplicate that linked one i think then those will be available. So if we have a duplicate, maybe we wanna have a similar database on another page. If we create a new view, it should give us all the options, including the new ones. So not just the original. Nope. So that's the original, but if you go to the one you duplicated, I think you duplicated one, right? Yeah, so we'll go to the duplicate fun this one? and add a new view there. Yeah, because that's the duplicate. Yeah. You will be able to see all of the ones that you you developed, both the original and the new one. So that is a workaround. If you've created a bunch of views in a linked database, not the original, duplicating like, it mm -hmm. will give you, you can copy those views. And I'm just going to make this not full width just to see. Yeah, you actually don't get a ton of visibility without full width views, right? There's only three showing. Mm -hmm. It's not a ton. So we'll go back to full width here. And then I think it's even less. I know some of you like to do your your uh, databases inside of a, a call out. But it looks like all the views are still visible here. I know sometimes putting it inside of a call out can kind of give you reduced ability to see the different tabs. But yeah, I think I think we covered most of the features. Just a lot of its things are in slightly different locations, and you have to get get used to that a little bit. Yeah, and I think you just using the using the term layout instead of view. I think before we always talked, we called timeline, gallery, board, etc. We called those views. I think maybe just referring those to layout types instead of view, and then also linked views instead of linked databases because now you can have multiple databases pulled into one view so trying to change some of that language as well yeah <laughs> it's kind of takes some getting used to is there anything people want to see or yeah, see a us... demo we're working with demo data but we can either create something new or uh, we might have some demo data we could play with I was thinking like, it was this one that I thought uh, having a temporary setting for the Pomodoro would then allow you to kind of quickly switch between, you know, Pomodoro. Yeah. If you if you use Pomodoro for your task or, or time or anything like that. But those sorts of things were like, OK, I want to start with the easy things. Now I want to move on to the harder things. So that's one one way that a temp filter might make sense. 
-hmm. Is there a rule for when views are saved based on where they are created? How does having the link database in a synced block container affect this? Is there a rule for where views are saved? I'm not sure. Well, I think the, we know the original view will show up anytime you have an option to copy it. Yep. And then if you created views, so we just showed that example where we had created a marketing and finance, when we duplicated, that came along with it and you could copy it. But if you did have a linked database in a synced block, then you are actually, you're not duplicating that, you're using the exact same one. So I think, yeah, if we've got a synced block and drag a linked database, then they'll all stay within there. And if I make a new view here, it's not going to impact the other one because this is a new, let's see, new calendar view. Who knew time was counted in tomatoes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Eight more. Yeah, it's interesting how you don't have as many visible options here. But now we can copy and sync this. Let's paste it again below. So now any changes I make, so let's say for example, I'm just gonna rename this tasks to not have that little flame. If I scroll down, no flame, no flame, right? So if they're in the same sync block, they're always gonna be mirrored, but linked databases will not have that same effect. It's like, as soon as you've made a new linked instance, it's its own new entity. It does not impact any yeah. past databases. I hope that makes and I would sense. say as a general rule as well, do not put an original inline database in a synced block. You might accidentally delete. And I, cause I do find even selecting blocks within a synced block can be sort of yeah. finicky. Yes. So that, that's the nice word. For nice it. way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> And you wouldn't want to accidentally delete your original source material. Tiffany was saying, can you show how you would set up two different views for a guest, a show guest list for previous and upcoming guests using the date filter? Yeah, let's, why don't we set that up? Let's go back to the sandbox page. Oh, and I find Notion sidebar jumping also a little, a little tricky. Oh, when you, okay. when you mouse over it? Yeah, even just like dragging a page into the sidebar, you're kind of having to drag it a little higher and there's some funny business going on there. <laughs> we love you, Notion, but pull it together. Um, okay, so a guest list. So we will need an original database for this. And I think the one way we didn't actually share is to just create a page and mm -hmm. call this guest list. And then we'll just say simple table view and we'll say new database guest one i feel like I, there should be some more creative names coming up here like i don't know mary poppins or something feel free to <laughs> feel free to oh, add yeah any. let's see uh, and then let's add a date property because it sounds i don't know like where you. that came from <laughs> amazing okay and so tiffany too you might also have i'm guessing maybe scheduled I mean, that might be a status and so we'll just say um you know date of their appearance we got vin diesel next weekend super exciting lando norris love it let's get lando on the second guest one will be tuesday okay great so we've got a couple and maybe want to make a few that are further out so like you know lando's not coming until may Vin Diesel will be April. Okay, great. And so you want to see guest list for previous and upcoming. So let's say the default is upcoming. Now let's make a new view for past. And depending on how you want to see this, you might want to see calendar view, but depending on how spread apart your guests are, a table view might be totally fine. Great. Okay. So let's actually filter these now. And we're gonna to wanna to do an advanced filter whenever you're dealing with uh, dates now. If you're doing dynamic dates, we wanna use this advanced filter. So let's say upcoming date is on, I think on or after today probably makes the most sense for, for that. Okay, great. 
and I think all of the guests are on or after today, yeah. so <laughs> we'll do we'll do one more. I should have picked one where the last name is. There we go. Danielle. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, no. Okay, That's so you can okay. see as soon as I changed his uh, his date, he disappeared from this view yes. because of that filter. Uh -huh. So that's great. And then past. Now, what I probably should have done is duplicated that upcoming instead of making a new one. So just because I'm lazy, I'm going to do that. I'm going to duplicate this because that date filter is already applied. And now I can actually say on or before today. Great. And then just rename that to past. Okay. Past guests. Great. So upcoming guests, past guests. Great. Let me know if that makes sense tiffany if there's anything else that you want to see in that of how we would how we would do that but that's that's how i would do it i think we literally just did that for our events calendar too in notion mastery it was like see all of our past trainings and see upcoming trainings in the same tabs so i think that's great let's save for everyone and then let's delete this nonsense one there we go, upcoming and past. And then let's say, oh, I really like this view. Let's, uh, you can command L or copy link. And I'm gonna go back to this page and I really, really wanna see this guest list here. Excellent. And let's copy the existing view. We want the past guests as the default and the upcoming, oh, hang on. Did it not give me the option to pull from the original on that one? That's interesting. Let me start fresh. So add view. Yeah. Um, is this, okay. do you think it's because you're, I think maybe it's because of the pasting the URL. Maybe, yeah. Let's, I think if you Versus start a fresh. a fresh view, it's going to ask you. And I, yeah. Upcoming. I'm really tempted to say, you heard it here first, folks. Yes. <laughs> Copying the link, go. not necessarily the best way. So I think, yeah, maybe just starting fresh with That's a good... linked view and then selecting your source is better than copying the link to your source and pasting it as a linked database. Great. And then Great. I see Aldona saying, can you review how to merge views from different databases? So yeah, that's we have a new linked view. Do you want to pull in a different database? So as long as you're not using an original, and we're not with this guest list because I can see there's an arrow here, there's an arrow here. So now I can add a new view. And pretty much anytime you create a new view, it's gonna prompt you to choose a source. And again, this is where you can choose any database that exists in your space that you've got permission. I'm just gonna click on notes and ideas and I can pull in my master view there. And I'm just gonna do that gallery view. And yeah, master notes, guest. Yeah. So I actually think a really great, this is making me think a great example of where it's so nice to see information grouped together is information that is related in some way. So let's say you are planning an event and you have speakers at your event. You might have a speakers database. You will also have a task database. And so you could easily jump between, okay, what are the outstanding tasks or who are my volunteer or who's the team that's working on this event? So you can pull in these different ones and be able to quickly jump between those things. But I would also say, just because you can have them all together, there's still going to be times where you might want to see two linked databases or linked views on one page. And yeah. that is also still okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. I think someone mentioned meal planning was another good one. So you've got your grocery list, you can have your meal plans, you can have your mm -hmm. task list, you know, you can combine a bunch of different things there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think but... there's maybe some clarification, Benjamin, saying you can't merge. We can pull sources into a linked view and see each source at a time. They're not coming together. So I know that's a big wish list for people is they want to see multiple databases on one calendar. That is still, that's not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, though people wish nice. it was. Yeah, That would be nice. You would, yeah, you so would think that one these new features would start view. moving toward that idea of a source where maybe you could actually choose multiple sources if they all had the same date like a date property that was named the same yeah 
but yeah, I can't be like, oh no, I really like these views and I want to pull them up into this view, unfortunately. Yeah, any other questions around that? I think it just takes some playing and wrapping your head around, just try, trying it out on a sandbox page, you know, create a new page. Chances are, if you've already got some databases in your workspace, give yourself a page to play with. Again, always start with that slash CR, or I think the other one is what slash linked, but slash CR It'll is faster. It'll start, yeah, I think yeah. CR is faster, which is nice that they kept that. I also see Tiffany's following up on the guest one. Mm -hmm. I could copy these views to my calendar. So you could create, you could actually even take the past guests and future guests, you could change the layout. So you could actually still have that filter, but just say, you know what? I actually don't want this in a table. I wanna see this in, the, in a calendar. And you would do that through the layout tab. So now you've got a calendar view of that instead, or you could duplicate it and then choose a different layout if you wanted to see both a table and a calendar. Yeah, give yourself some, some options there. Same filters, just different view. <laughs> Make sure you have a stress ball nearby. I'm not sure what that was in reference to, but it's funny. No, maybe. Can you talk about how you've integrated this database update into your own workspaces beyond the wonderful hiding of database titles? Yeah, for me, my uh, we're still working with test data right here because there, there'd obviously be a lot of stuff that probably shouldn't be shown publicly. But uh, for me, let me just delete this delete and unsync copies, don't need that. Uh, I've done some substantial cleanup on some of these pages. I spend most of my time on the today page or this week page. And what I do is bring in pretty much all the databases that I might need to touch in a single day into this one dashboard. Before I used to have multiple columns, you know, tasks are here, projects are, and it takes up a lot of space and required a lot of scrolling. So now I can have all my projects and tasks in this one clean view if I want to. So that's, uh, let me just zoom out a little bit. Um, I'm zoomed in a little bit just for the purposes of this demo, but I tend to be a little bit more zoomed out. And I like being able to see what are the super high priority tasks, the most important ones. Those are filtered a little bit differently. And then I have my more flexible view of if you've got a bit more time and energy and want to, you know, do some more tasks that aren't due till next week. Great. And just giving myself some options alongside then having quick access to any projects and that sort of thing. So I just find it, it takes less clicks now. Everything's kind of tidied up and, and more condensed. Well, and I think I've publicly said before and definitely within the Notion Mastery uh, community that I used to not, views didn't work for me because having it tucked in a toggle sort of made it invisible to me yes. <laughs> and I wouldn't change views. And now I would say my workflow, I do have, instead of having tasks and projects beside each other, I now have projects and tasks in, along the same linked view. So I can flip to my tasks and my projects. I love that. So I kind of keep all the action oriented stuff together exactly. and then keep more of the resource stuff together. But as you can see there, notes library can be grouped together. And I still do have a few instances repeated. For example, I have my tasks at the top, usually in a list or a table. And then lower down, I usually do have my tasks in a calendar view because I like to rearrange and sort things with a calendar view. So there's still more than one view on the page, but the top of the page definitely doesn't have as many columns, doesn't have as much stuff looking at me. And I think it will help with focus just to be able to zero in, but I can see the tabs, which is important for me exactly. <laughs> before I could, I never looked out beyond sight, the drop down. Time. Yeah, exactly. Luthia was saying, is there, is there an instance where you'd recommend and still prefer keeping two side-by-side -side linked databases? I think one great example of that is I have a, backlog of tasks. So any tasks that don't have a date on the left, and then I have my calendar on the right. So it's the same database, same actions database. And I can just quickly drag those items from the left and right to assign them a date. And I think that's going to be the fastest way of doing it other than clicking a date property in a, in a table view. So that drag and drop wherever you might need to do that, the rapid kind of reassigning. That's, that's one simple example. Yeah, I do that still with my content. I have anything yeah. without a date on one list and I drag it into the calendar to assign content to a date. That's absolutely still really helpful. Yeah, great uh, question. And then I saw 
the so best practice is to go back and clean up the views on the original database. This is totally opposite how I built my views. Yes, many people <laughs> built all their views on the linked databases. You can still copy, you can duplicate that linked database to keep some of those views you built. But I would say if you know that you keep coming back to a, sim a similar view or similar filters, going back into the original is a good way to, to have them available no matter what when you are creating a new a new linked view. Yeah, and I wouldn't create too many. Like I think even no more than three probably on your originals as a sort of general starting point because at some point you're going to start to get those plus eight more or whatever. So really just a couple that you know you're going to reuse over and over again. But yeah, as Kat said, I, I basically, once I've set up a couple linked ones that I like, I'm probably most likely going to duplicate that and drag that into a page. So I'm often not too worried about having those original views in there. So it really depends oh, on, yeah. I know, I thought of one that you cleaned up that's really nice is you, for processing information, you used to have kind of toggles in a row. So process your yeah. library, process your notes. Now that's, you could, all your processing stuff can be in one linked view and exactly. you can sort of process across the top, which is nice. And yeah. that's a great example too, where, for me, this is about access, like having quick access to things I've recently saved. But, oh, my notes, library, docs, and swipe are all here. I could probably duplicate this and then say, filter this to only show me things that haven't been assigned a tag, haven't been assigned any metadata. So that's a great example of, I don't want to recreate those views again. They're already here, but I just need a different context for those. And I would move that into my processing dashboard. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so, oh, and we see... Hoping Notion adds the ability to subgroup in a table view. Well, I think the, I mean, the grouping, the fact that they have grouping is really nice. I, I'm trying, I have trouble picturing subgrouping. So would you have a yeah. toggle group and then a sub and then sub toggles? If you have a lot of data, I could see wanting to be able to refine that. In that case, I would probably use filters. So I'd have, I'd group and have filters and then have different tabs. So in a way that's like creating a group and a subgroup is you've got your different views across the top and use the filter as your main group and then use the group as your subgroup. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here it's like, I'm only seeing high priority and then I'm seeing it by task and by event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ex yeah. I try to use full width pretty much on any page that I've got embedded databases. I would have a full page. Also, I really like that we had a comment from a cat today. <laughs> cat wants That's pizza. awesome. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think we I think we hit most of the high notes and most of those questions. Yeah, and there are a couple of other great updates that were announced at Block by Block a few weeks ago. How how long ago was that? That yeah. the, the Teams sidebar, that's going to be incredible for Teams. And then also the Google Calendar Sync, which I'll be curious to try it out. Because right now, I think you and I both have an API that automatically includes events into our task database. Yes. So I don't know that I want to let that go. <laughs> Yeah. And sort of, is it a two-way sync? So if I add something to my task database, does that appear on the Google Calendar or is it only events that get fed in? Yeah. I'm curious how that's going to go over. We oh, I see that. Tiffany asking the question about the difference between grouping and using tags. So you can group by any property, almost any property, I think other than rollups. So you'll notice here how these got kind of tucked so I'm, I'm looking at a table here and it's basically grouping by tag. So specifically type, right? And it just sort of visually separates things. So I could show maybe a different grouping to show you what that looks like. But you can pretty much choose from any property in your database. I can say, I just want to see by status, maybe by Pomodoro. Okay, great. And it's going to just organize that table by those different tag tags, drop downs, multi-select property kind of thing. So here's another example. If you do have a team and you want to see what are each of my team members working on, you can group those items by team member just to kind of see what is the workload and that sort of thing. It just gives you a more powerful way of visualizing information, just that little extra way of grouping it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really that when that update came out, it was a really nice way because I think a lot of us 
would have multiple linked databases, each filtered to a different thing. And that some the grouping really helped condense the amount of space exactly. that was taken up for that. And also I saw a question, uh, do you want to answer Marie around the energy in your task dashboard? What does that mean up and down? <laughs> Uh, there's lots of different ways to do this, but in this particular instance, it's, is this task energy giving or energy taking? And it's just a way for me to see in the day, like, what are the kinds of tasks that actually steal my energy? And even just approaching my day, like, is this going to be a high intensive, cognitive load intensive day? It just kind of primes me a little bit. And again, I've, I've talked about this a little bit. I think it's a very... ADHD way of seeing the world that I don't think of my tasks in terms of is this a 10k task is this an important task like it it does require that I think about my days in terms of my energy management so some of you might be more time focused how many pomodoros do I have others might be okay I need to build some momentum I might need to get some quick wins out in the in the beginning of the day so I will sometimes tackle those energy giving tasks first to kind of amp me up so I've got more energy to complete the ones later in the day. I'm, I'm a big believer though that task management is so, so, so personal and that might not make sense for people or they don't think about time that way and that's totally fine. You might think about it more in terms of how much time is this task taking or is this a priority task? Lots of different ways to do it. But that's why I like to give myself these options of like, is this an intensive brain day? Okay, is this urgent? You know, and how I tackle that might be different day to day. Do you have an energy property, Kat? Do you do you think about so tasks? And I things? don't have the up or down, but I do have a brain one that I have in my personal space where how much how much mental effort is required. And the mental effort, when I look at a day, if I have a bunch of things that have, and I use brains, <laughs> yeah. if I have a bunch of four brain tasks, that's not, I look at that list and I know it's not reasonable and it's not going to happen. So I can adjust and say, I can only have really demanding tasks. They have to be spread out. And it's just unrealistic if I have a day with too many brains. Yeah, too many brains. <laughs> I am yeah. not a zombie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And again, all of us have different, you know, some of us have full-time jobs. Some of us aren't as in control of our time. There's a lot of different factors for why you might organize or think about your time differently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might see something like this and be like, ah, do I have to input all those properties? Or like, that's really annoying. Yeah. But that's also why we have a lot of templates for, for things like that too. So I have a template for low energy tasks, high energy tasks, immersive process, etc. And I would say, you know, I'm, I'm in Murray's task because it's a, it's a group. <laughs> It is a shared actions database. So I have access to use those ups and downs for the work for my for my day job. <laughs> but I because I'm not used to it, it's not in the rhythm, I just don't show those properties and I don't really apply them. So everyone on the team can use those properties differently. So that's just something to consider as well. Are you sharing your task database with other people? And do they want that? I worked with a team and we did put the mental effort. I think some team members really liked having that looking at the day and how much mental effort is required where others just didn't use that property and they just hid it away. And I think that works really well as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And that's why I think every team member needs their own dashboard with their own nice filters. Some people can look at that in table view, keep it really simple, hardly any properties. Yeah. Other people get to see their big, beautiful dashboards in the way that they want to see it. Yeah. Awesome. And I think, so PJ asked about the timeline of the team's release. I don't think we know that, right? I don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I also don't know about the Google Calendar sync either. Yeah, you never really know with those coming soon features. How soon is soon? Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Yeah. Spoons <laughs> column. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely a spoons column. <laughs> is it lunchtime there? I just heard a bark. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I know we're... <laughs> We're at the hour now and Mochi's like, hey, it's lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, Feed me. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah I, well, think, I think we covered I, all I, the... I would say a couple of things just to remind people is as much as possible, I just want to encourage everyone to very clearly name your views or tabs, whatever you want to call them, so that if you hide your title, especially if you're sharing with someone else, 
So whether that's naming the, the tab really clearly, or you can use a heading, you know, use, use a heading above the table or put it in a callout block where it's very clear what it's describing. I think that should be one of the things you really want to think about. Even if it's your own space, it's still helpful. Reduce that cognitive load. Don't make you think, don't make you have to remember, wait, what is this? What am I looking at? I really think putting some effort into that is going to pay off down the road. So I just wanted to kind of remind people about that part. I fully agree. Yep. Even things like this, like ha having little bits of microcopy, I think, especially if you've got a shared account anywhere that you can just give a little bit of extra context. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We did it. Covered all the things. <laughs> You're all experts now. Go forth and make amazing databases. Awesome. I, I guess the other thing I would just say, you can tackle these one at a time. You don't have to sit down and say, oh, I'm going to have to go hide every database title and go and do all my original database. No, just do That's them as point. they arise if you have time. But your your space I, your space hasn't changed maybe as much as, you know, functionally the space should be operating the same. It just looks a little different. Yeah. And you have these options but you shouldn't be having to like rebuild from scratch. So in case anyone's feeling like this change is so daunting, I just, uh, you know, theoretic, I'm sure there are people out there who didn't even notice <laughs> <laughs> and they're just using their notion based the same. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's another question popped up. I think we did cover it around, uh, integrating our calendars with notion. I use Zapier. I don't know if you also use Zapier. Mm -hmm. Cat. Yeah. And so anytime, Anytime something is added to a Google Calendar, automatically zaps into my actions database with the type equals event. So that's you just have to be for... careful. If someone yeah. invites you to a recurring meeting, it can just completely uh, blow through yeah. all of your zaps. And you usually get a warning that says, we pause this because you just sent 1100 requests. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, oh, oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, be careful. But uh, I do think the, the zap is a pretty a pretty sweet uh, way to do that and, until yeah. anyway they launch that integration mm -hmm. awesome all right well thanks for joining us it was fun to have your questions and uh, build along live I know Kat and I could probably do this for four hours but we should <laughs> we should probably get on with our lives <laughs> what <laughs> so and you gotta, you gotta feed you gotta feed mochi feed the dog yeah absolutely well, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope yeah. that uh, you have some fun playing with these new databases and figuring out which combinations make sense for you. Uh, don't forget to name your tabs really well. Be mindful of maybe not working from those original databases because that's not going to give you the ability to combine different data sources. And yeah, I think that's, I think we covered it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks everybody for coming and for participating with us. And yeah, uh, have a have an incredible weekend. Yes. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time.